Two thirteen dispatch. The whole bridge just fell down. Start started whoever everybody. The whole bridge just collapsed. So very very much a tragedy. Um the the loss of life uh, connected with the collapse of the uh, Francis Scott Key Bridge and uh, um certainly also the economic impact uh cannot be understated. The list of bridges uh, I think was compiled based on spans that were similar or longer and also the the idea of um uh, non uh, redundant uh, steel tension members, or what used to be called fracture critical classification, and uh, I, I don't, I don't think those characteristics are necessarily a good way to make a list. Um, the the risk to a bridge is uh, complex, and it's based on a lot of things. Um, what the traffic is under the bridge, uh, obviously, if container ships aren't passing uh, a certain bridge, they, they don't need to be considered in the peer protection that's required. Um, also the, the, the waterway, the, the navigability, um, the conditions of the piers, uh, whether a ship can even uh, contact the pier. Francis Scott Key Bridge was a case where everything uh, was uh, pretty high risk. And in fact, the risk happened. The ship lost control, uh, destroyed the pier. Uh, the focus on fracture critical non-redundancy, non-redundant steel tension members is a bit of a misnomer. It didn't matter what bridge was sitting on a pier. If the pier disappears, the bridge is not designed to span over a missing pier. It's it's almost the same of holding a ball in your hand and Pulling your hand away quick, the, the ball will fall to the ground with gravity. Uh, and that's what we saw. So the risks are really, you have to assess what the conditions are for each bridge. And it isn't just a, a matter of long span length that could put a bridge at risk. There's, there's other barge and ship collision incidents that have occurred and uh, on, on much smaller bridges even. The focus right now is on uh, shipping traffic. And uh, the the incident um, of what occurred in Baltimore has brought that focus, and um, it's really a, a a a good focus that we likely should have had by now to look at the piers of bridges and the traffic that's going by. Certainly, older bridges were all designed at a time when uh, the vessels that were passing them were much smaller. Even if you look at the the roster of ship sizes, the the dolly that hit the Francis Scott Key Pier was comparatively small in relation to the largest ships that exist, and uh, their speed and their weight uh, produce a certain uh, risk to the pier. The protection systems are expensive to put in, and so that's a budgetary thing. Uh, as a nation, we we tend to have uh, all the money that's needed when a disaster happens. But imagine if we spent pennies to the dollar on the preparedness to evaluate the risk ahead of time and make it so that something like this wouldn't have happened. Uh, in this case, it could have been something like a dolphin system. Um, there, there are many ways to approach uh, peer protection, and not all are defensive. You can use tugboats, you can use speed uh, limits, you can use navigation, uh, navigational assistance, and uh, even other design features like locating piers where uh, ships would run aground uh, and not actually contact the pier in the first place. This was an extraordinary event, an extraordinarily rare set of circumstances. We don't actually know all the circumstances of this event, but those that we know, you know, a massive ship losing power and losing the ability to steer itself. Uh, I'm sure we're going to learn in the investigation uh, other factors that contributed to this. And it takes a lot of factors to cause uh, an event like this. It isn't ever just one thing. Uh, there are not uh, rampant vulnerabilities uh, throughout our infrastructure. The 
the American Society of Civil Engineers does a, a report card uh, for America's infrastructure and they update it uh, quite often. And it, it does point to uh, good practice preparations and uh, uh, the, the maintenance that's required on bridges. And uh, the one thing I would suggest we pay more attention to as a nation is that maintenance. There is not a bridge uh, that exists in any material, uh, in any design that doesn't depend on proper attention to the maintenance that's required uh, to keep that bridge uh, in proper service. And uh, uh, that requires funding to do it. And uh, it, it seems easy to cut that funding when money's needed elsewhere, but that funding is important for the maintenance that's required. Fracture critical it was the term when it was invented. It was invented after uh, an incident with the Silver Bridge where there was a non-redundant member in tension that had uh, cracks in it that weren't visible. In fact, weren't it wasn't known that they were there until uh, the crack actually became critical. And it was a lesson uh, that we need to look at uh, those components uh, of a bridge that, that don't have redundancy. Um, you know, you, if you've ever flown on an airplane, uh, you've flown on a, a structure that uh, depends on a non-redundant element, the wing. That wing goes through a lot uh, as the plane is flying, and it has to stay attached to the plane. And so airline, uh, I'm sorry, uh, airplane companies do their designs so that the wings uh, uh, have special design criteria and uh, construction requirements and inspection requirements to ensure uh, that you keep the wings on the planes. And that's the same idea with fracture critical. Uh, what are now called non-redundant steel tension members in uh, steel bridges uh, to ensure that we put the right design requirements, fabrication requirements, and in inspection and maintenance requirements so that we maintain that higher level of safety that's required for that element. It, it, it really uh, does work. We haven't had a, an incident with a, a fracture critical uh, non-redundant steel tension member since those provisions uh, were put in place, which is exactly what they were put in place to do, create the safety uh, that protects the nation, uh, given the uh, non-redundancy present, uh, present. Just like you know, a plane would crash if the wing fell off. If you if you were to have a fracture in one member that's designated uh, as non-redundant, um, you could. Now, since the early days, we've also learned that there are redundancies that aren't direct in the design, and some of those are used um, in designs today to eliminate that status. But where we classify a bridge as fracture critical, having non-redundant uh, steel tension members. We do those uh, special uh, design, fabrication, inspection, and maintenance um, procedures, and uh, they they have been successful at delivering the safety we demand of our bridges. I am confident in the safety of our infrastructure. Uh, I think the uh, the focus does need to be on uh, aging infrastructure where uh, where where maintenance. It is a part of the the life cycle of uh, of a bridge, and uh, if I were a, a, a an executive at a DOT, uh, I would be looking at uh, uh, where have we deferred uh, things that uh, uh, because of budgets, and how do we address those? Uh, because that that is the uh, the thing that can happen. Uh, that's why ASCE. Uh, and their report card sometimes has uh, letters that you wouldn't appreciate seeing on your child's report card uh, for our infrastructure. And uh, um, it's a good measure of, of where to look. Uh, it's just a matter of doing uh, the maintenance in most cases, keeping the bridges uh, properly in service uh, with the safety that protects uh, the public that uses that bridge uh, day in and day out.